Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tech Talk video, we have yet more information. Xbox 720, also known as Durango, and the lack of backwards compatibility with previous generation Xbox, Xbox 360, as well as some further confirmation on the specifications that have been heavily rumoured. So Bloomberg have been saying that people with knowledge in the matter have um, basically confirmed that the PowerPC architecture of Xbox 360 has been abandoned in favour of an x86 platform. Now, the problem with this is it does mean that the system will no longer be compatible with Xbox 360 software. There are a couple of reasons for that. One, it's very difficult to emulate things on a software emulator. You guys may remember the difficulties that, say, the Xbox 360 had with Xbox One. And furthermore, the CPU of the Xbox 360 was pretty decent, and the Xbox 720 will simply not be able to just... Um, emulate that through power of software alone. It will require quite a lot of computational cycles that the Xbox 720 just likely will not be able to have. As I've mentioned in previous videos, look how much actual PC power is required to just emulate something like a GameCube. And obviously a GameCube is nowhere near as powerful as say a PS3. So with that all said, we know that Gaikai, which of course is what Sony are going to be using for a cloud-based solution is likely going to be how they are going to be handling backwards compatibility. Obviously, Sony do not want to lose the backwards compatibility of PS1, PS2, and certainly PS3, and maybe even the mobile games of the PlayStation range. Um, however, obviously, that isn't to say that it's not fraught with certain perils, and mostly latency, which obviously action games are going to be very susceptible to. It seems that Microsoft are not going to be going that route, at least at the moment, obviously this isn't going to be confirmed, and obviously there is going to be that very cheap Xbox 360 released. At the moment it's codenamed as Stingray, and as I previously reported, is going to be at a very reasonable price point, around £65 or 99 American dollars. However, what we really need to take away from this is it does lead a lot of credence, it does lend itself, shall I say, a lot of credence that it will be following a very s similar path to the PlayStation 4. Now, if you think about it, it does make sense. The fact that the system is likely rumoured to be using a Windows 8 type of platform, it certainly does make a very, very good sense indeed that it will be using x86 or uh, even a 64-bit type of processor, which of course the Jaguar is. Now, the CPU inside the Xbox 720 is rumoured to be running at 1.6 GHz and is an APU exactly like the PS4, in that it is a CPU and GPU pretty much on the exactly the same die, also known as system on chip. There have been a few changes however for the xbox uh, 720 version compared to the ps4 apparently there will be less gc and cores on board however that doesn't necessarily mean that the xbox 720 even if it does have less gc and cores will be slower there are a couple of reasons for this for one for all we know that those cores could be clocked significantly higher or indeed the CPU itself could be clocked significantly higher since we don't actually know either the clock speed of the Xbox 720 exactly yet, after all it's not been confirmed, and we certainly don't know the clock speed at the moment on PS4. Also there could be other um, reasons that the Xbox 720 will be able to compete with the PS4. One of them would be a dedicated uh, graphics card built on the system. Remember. AMD GPUs and um, APUs have the ability to crossfire on the same system. So it's actually possible that the APUs on the uh, Xbox 720 can quite happily interface with a built-in GPU. And that GPU actually could even have its own dedicated RAM, which could even be DDR5. Obviously right now we know the main specifications of the Xbox 720 include DDR3. However, an actual dedicated board of, say, DDR5 could well be there, um, for all we know, and that could be cross-fired with the APU. The, AP the GPU itself could not be particularly powerful, I'm talking about the, the, the dedicated graphics card, however, combined with uh, the, say, 12 cores of the, the Jaguar, it would be a formidable force, to say the least. 
Obviously, this is no way a rumour. I'm just simply hypothesising. Just to demonstrate that although people are counting the Xbox 720 out in terms of technical grunt compared to the PS4, we simply do not know. There is chances that Microsoft have moved the specifications on considering the leaks were from, I believe, 2011 and a lot can happen in that time. We know, of course, that the Xbox 720 has also been put back a little bit in terms of its reveal. It was originally supposed to have been revealed this month on the 25th, uh, 24th, actually, but supposedly it's going to be pushed back at least one month, possibly even until E3. In that time, it's likely that quite a bit can happen, and they probably want the time to maybe get some software ready, and even some of the hardware may not be completely ready yet either. With the Xbox 720 firmly in the crosshairs of Sony right now, after all, to say that it's going to be a very interesting E3 if both uh, if the Xbox 720 is revealed on the same date, because Sony are definitely going to want to really make their show a spectacular thing to say the least. Although I do want the reveal to be on the 21st of May, I would not be sad if it actually was on E3 day. I think it would be a very interesting show, certainly one of the more interesting ones that I've seen, because it would be kind of a shouting match between Sony and Microsoft. Um, obviously, Microsoft have a little bit more going in simply because they've still got the reveal to go, therefore they have that little bit more chance to, to excite the crowd. On the other hand, Sony have the crowd already in their palm of their hand somewhat, and they definitely have already impressed developers. So, anyway, it's going to be a uh, interesting time over the next couple of months, and I know I keep saying interesting, but damn it is. It's going to be a very exciting time for the console industry. And the Xbox 720 is also going to be a very fantastic opportunity to start getting the public used to Windows 8. Right now, many tech analysts are worried for the future of Microsoft in terms of the Windows desktop space. This is for a couple of reasons. One, of course, would be cell phones are now starting to become even more popular. Tablets as well, iOS and Android, of course. But there's another reason. Those are starting to creep onto desktops. You now, of course, have Google threatening to get into the um, desktop marketplace in terms of the operating system. And even the iOS devices, of course, with um, Apple are no longer just the only concern. Mac OS is also there. So, I think Microsoft are really going to want to pull out all the stops it can to make itself as dominant as possible going in and to make sure it is relevant. If you guys are not quite sure what I mean by that, you can feel free to Google, but a few tech analysts are starting to concern themselves over Microsoft's long-distance future. Anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video, and I will see you soon. I know it's been a fairly short one for tech analysis for me, but, well, what are you going to do? Anyway. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and I will see you soon. Take care and bye for now.